Epic and Gold. <laughs> <laughs> okay, ready? Welcome to another episode of The Epic Family Road Trip. We have now been on the island for three weeks. Our only way to stock up on groceries and other supplies is to catch an occasional ride with our neighbor Dan on his fan boat. This morning, a couple of us head into town to pick up supplies. sap. Um, we're going to get the fire going and just keep boiling. The weather's definitely changing this week. It's a lot warmer so the sap is flowing nicely. We want to make as much as we can before it stops flowing and probably in a, another week at the most. So today Pete made uh, maple sugar which is a new thing for us and it turned out amazing. We'll show you how we make that and, and then of course we're putting away maple syrup. I'm gonna do a check on the thickness of the ice. But first thing I noticed, today is quite a warm day, and you can see tons of slush here on top. So the first two inches are the soft melted slush. So right here it measures five inches of ice. There's a little bit of soft stuff on top. Obviously it's a lot thicker here than out there. I'm thinking in the middle of the lake it's more like one to two inches. So it'll definitely open up in the middle of the lake first and then it'll work its way in. We're from nine inches to five. It is April 2nd and uh, the day before Pete's birthday so we're looking forward to that tomorrow. But as you can see behind me the lake is still frozen, but there are some spots opening up, which is really exciting. And I don't know if you can see from here, but I'll show you on a drone shot the darker spots. So you'll see white spots and then almost dark gray, and those are thinner spots of ice. So uh, we're supposed to get a pretty heavy windstorm today and then heavy rain tomorrow turning to snow tomorrow. So all of that combined, I think, is going to really help to break up the ice. If not melted, it's going to help put weight on top and, and break it up. So we'll see. Um, it's going to be exciting because we know for sure by middle of next week things are going to really change because the temperature after this last big uh, winter storm, it really starts to warm up. So we're super excited about that and we'll hopefully be able to get a boat in the water uh, later next week. So today we're going up to our storage where about a year and a half ago if you recall, Carol and I put away a whole bunch of food just as a safety or emergency backup. And uh, we put them in five gallon pails. We did things like flour and beans and wheat berries and all kinds of uh, spices and all that stuff. We, a lot of it we put in mylar bags and we sealed it with uh, uh, oxygen absorber. So we haven't seen that stuff in over a year. And so today we're going to go open the front door and get inside and see what's there. Now for all we know, a mink or a marten, uh, which is a weasel type character, we've seen some here on the island. One of those could have broke in and have been enjoying our food supplies for the last year. We don't know. Um, rodents could have attacked it. So we're hoping not, but uh, today's a big day. We're going to find the key. We're going to open it up and see what... Uh, what's left in there, hopefully everything. The moment of truth. 
We might have to dig away to get it open. Remember to get a shovel? Yeah. Thanks, Dave. We're going to have to get a shovel. Some Over time, some dirt has washed over the front door area. We'll, we'll dig that out a bit and go see what's inside. Thanks. Wow, it's still frozen now. Will you get in? Uh, where there's a wheel, there's a road. We should probably dig this out and then put gravel down. Unfortunately, we broke a chunk off the door, which we're going to have to fix, obviously, but it's getting closer to opening up the cold cellar. There it goes. What do you think? I don't even want to look. So nerve-wracking. So, just from an initial inspection, it looks pretty good. There is mouse poop, though, so rodents have been in there. We just don't know if they've gotten into our food, so let's take a look. Oh, and there's some in the trap. At least one dead mouse. Okay, but it's not as bad as what I thought. It's not all ripped apart, and I don't see any. Like mud. I'm, I'm pretty relieved right now. <laughs> I think everything is pretty good, but we will definitely take everything out, look at it, and what we want to do is take all the flour and things that only last about a year to two years and use it this season, and then uh, the replace stuff. it with some new stuff. Um, over the next coming weeks. Oh, so I I really thought there was going to be a big nest and everything was just going to be torn apart. Well, let's <sighs> let's get in further and see what we got. <laughs> uh, we should probably pick away at that a bit. So all the poison's gone from here and uh, this one completely emptied. I don't really like using it but it is necessary but I want to try and figure out a different trap system that I don't have to use poison so that if there's owls around here it doesn't affect them or you know other animals like that. But uh, these were well used. They caught quite a few. I think my mistake was, uh, as you can see, they got, I didn't put this away properly. I think I ran out of um, buckets and I just set it in here and I, I thought, well, maybe they won't chew through this mylar bag, but obviously they did. And this looks like it's our seed for next year. <laughs> This one is perfect. I'll just uh, hand out some buckets. This one is more for us girls in situations. thing is, is there's hardly any mouse droppings in here a lot less than what I had thought and uh, no squirrels or anything so this is really really good sign we have a bunch of these and they were untouched and these uh, ready hour they look good so I'll just continue taking out um, the buckets and find where all the flour is I need to use a, a sticker, color s sticker system so I can just tell and just put them all um, different colors like yellow bean flour and red bean uh, dried eggs or vegetables blue, something like that.
cleaning this one out. This is the one I really wanted. Is a uh, all the wheat berries. So now we can uh, make our own flour. When we were putting away food, I think it was two years ago, we to get a kind of a head start on things, we bought some pre packaged uh, emergency food. So each one of these is a month's worth of food and it has a 25 year shelf life. So we have a whole bunch of this stuff, but I just noticed one of them, the, the, the container is open, but I don't think that matters because the uh, food is individually wrapped in mylar. So I'm just gonna open it and make sure nothing got in there. But I think it might've been just when we were putting it away last year. Not easy to open. So there's some kind of, something must have got into this one. <coughs> I'm going to dump it up, see what we're looking at here. Huh. This one is, um, you know, fruits and vegetables and all kinds of stuff. And for some reason it's been opened somehow. So uh, we're just going to have to inspect each bag. The feel of the bags is, wow, that's sticky. Some of the bags still feel like they're vacuum sealed. Um, but yeah, now we're gonna have to inspect them all just to make sure. All right, so we think we found the culprit. We, we've gone through our storage uh, food and that one had a broken lid. So it was probably broken and damaged during transit or whatever, so. Uh, the other ones are still sealed and are fine. And then this bag of juice, it's a orange energy drink mix, had a broken seal up here at the top. So it might have been sealed improperly or somehow broke due to uh, temperature fluctuations. I don't know, but um, we're going to reach out to Ready Hour and talk to them and see what they say about that. But um, we've gone through and inspected the other uh, bins and they're all in good shape. So that's really good. There was no rodent activity, no bugs, no mice, nothing like that. So it was just a, a broken seal. What we plan to do is get ourselves a um, freeze dryer machine. And we'll show you if we end up getting one. And that allows us to freeze dry our own food and pack it in mylar bags, which is ultimately the way we want to go for our emergency food supply. But also we think we can freeze dry meals, some of Carol's simple meals and take them with us on our overland trips and camping and Dan can take them out um, canoeing and things like that. So we're really excited about that prospect but in the meantime we're just going to go through a few more buckets and see if this happened anywhere else. But in general everything's in good shape and there's only one other bucket with, uh, or there's a couple other buckets with the juice so we'll make sure to check those. So we began putting food away last year in two different ways. We started out by doing the freeze thaw freeze method where we took something like rice, froze it, thawed it, refroze it, and then vacuum sealed it and put it into buckets. And then over time we started moving towards uh, mylar bags, uh, vacuum sealing them, sealing them off, and then putting oxygen absorbers in the buckets. And I think that's a much better method for long-term food storage. But you can see my first one I did, I remember putting three large oxygen absorbers in here, which is way too many. After, after this one, I started putting one in. And, uh, but it's held at seal. It's so much oxygen was absorbed, it actually concaved caved in the side of the barrel or the bucket. And it's held at seal. So this one has absolutely no air in there at all but all of them are nicely sealed. So we're really happy about that. That worked great. What we're gonna do is take one of each back to the cabin, open them up and just make sure everything looks good inside. We, we're pretty sure it, it will be great, but we also need to, like Carol said earlier, rotate the food out. Things like flour only has a one and a half, one to one and a half year lifespan, I think. So we're gonna use it because uh, 
we're making bread and things like that and then we'll replace it with new flour but we've been moving away from flour more using wheat berries which has a much longer shelf life apparently so wheat berries store for a long time especially stored in mylar bags but we're going to grab some of those as well and a couple years ago we bought a, a little flour mill hand crank deal we want to test uh, see if we can make flour out of the wheat berries and if we can make flour maybe we can make bread out of that flour so it's gonna be a fun experiment Alright, I'm going to open a couple of these buckets from the storage room just to see whether uh, the contents were stored properly. In this one we have two bags of wheat berries, two bags of rice, and a bag of popcorn. It was put down August 5th, 22. So the, uh, the problem with these uh, five gallon pails that we bought, um, they are a one-time usage. So from now on, We've done our research and you can buy the ones that thread on and then you could easily pop off the thread, take out a bag of rice if you wanted to, put in an oxygen absorber and close it back up without damaging the, the lid. So if I get this open, I'm going to have to get a new lid for it. But the contents in these are going to be used over the next couple of months, so it doesn't matter. But anyway, that's a tip for you that we've learned the hard way. Get the, get the threading lids. All right. So, what do we got here? Nice. So, this is a vacuum sealed bag of wheat berries with an oxygen absorber, and it is rock hard tight no oxygen no damage no chance that it could go bad you know get spoiled um, get bugs or insects in there very nice so that makes me happy the reason we're checking is because we've never put food away before this and so rather than just keep putting more in with the same methods without checking oh yeah we even put uh, what kind of leaves were these either tea leaves or um, I'll have to ask Carol, but that apparently helps keep bugs away as well. But rather than just, you know, putting away more layers and buckets of food without knowing that we're doing it correctly, we thought it would be important to check and make sure things are good. And now I think we have the confidence to keep going and put more food away. So that's wonderful. Wheat berries, rice. Okay, so this one I can tell because it's in a Ziploc bag. This one was done in the freeze thaw freeze method. So, what that is, is we put the rice in a bag in the freezer and let it get really cold for a day or so, take it out and let it completely thaw. And that action, if there were any weevil eggs, for instance, in there, that action would hatch the weevil eggs. And then we put it back in the freezer and let it freeze solid again. And that action, that freezing, would then kill any eggs that might have germinated. So that is another method that works great. Um, so, yeah, none of these are in mylar bags. The mylar bags, uh, we know that method is solid. That's um, where you put an oxygen absorber in the mylar bag and then you heat seal the top. It sucks out all of the oxygen and that's a foolproof method. And so is this. So I'm glad to see that this method in particular worked and worked quite well. There's a popcorn. We thought, wouldn't it be nice to say we're up here in the winter, can't get off the island, we run out of treats. We could just pop up some popcorn. I'm glad we haven't had to use any of this, but 
It's also very nice to know that it stores well. So here's an oxygen absorber. This is a medium sized one. There's large, medium, small. And uh, it's kind of hard now, which means it's used up. It's, it's kind of, uh, I don't know how you would say it, but it's expired now, but it did its job. It sucked out all the oxygen out of this pail and it would stay like that until we open it. And then these leaves um, that were thrown in the bottom, I cannot for the life of me remember the name of them. They're not tea leaves, they're what you put in a soup, but I'll have to ask Carol. What are those leaves called that are, they're not tea leaves, these are... Um, bay leaves? Bay leaves, okay. I just asked Carol, these are bay leaves. So that's, uh, that gives me the confidence that we can keep using these methods and uh, store away another year's supply of food. It's not spinning, but. So our idea, as you know, with uh, the wheat berries was to use this manual grinder we have to grind our own flour. But this grinder, it's not working as it should. Like it only, when you're cranking it, the uh, grinding wheels here on the end only grind every once in a while and most of the wheat berries just pass straight through it. And I've disassembled and reassembled it twice now. Like in the first few, turns on which I was filming before it wasn't working so I paused the video disassembled it watched a video on how to assemble it correctly put it all back together and it's still not working um, I think it's something something is just either a, it's like a manufacturer defect of the some piece on the end here that's supposed to hold the grinder really tight just doesn't fit well so it's got space and play on it and it just doesn't let it uh, connect hard enough to allow the things to grind so I'm going to use some other um, flour that we had stored away in that same bucket, just straight up flour, just make a simple bread. But uh, this will be something we definitely replace. We might get in contact with the manufacturer or it'll just be much easier to just get a new one. When we were making our maple syrup, we made a jar, which this jar um, I mixed with another jar of maple syrup that we had, our first batch and then our second batch. And on the second batch, I cooked it just a little bit too long and it, some of it is crystallized into a candy. If you, it comes down to a really close point between not being syrupy enough, you know, having the consistency thickness of, you know, the maple syrup you're used to, um, and being just too much where it'll actually harden into a bit of a candy. And as you can see in this jar, some of what was in there has actually crystallized into something of a maple candy. But uh, mostly this is maple syrup. That was just my mistake of mixing the two consistencies together but we made three different or essentially four different versions of maple syrup from uh, the maple sap that we collected and one was the maple syrup accidental maple candy a really cool one was the uh, maple sugar that we made here and this is almost confectionery sugar like powdered sugar but it's uh, granulated maple sugar just a really cool thing that we're all actually excited about um, one because it's neat to be able to have your own almost endless supply of uh, different kinds of sugar and nice treats for baking or just for everything like if you're storing the stuff it can last almost forever and you can get it out of trees every single spring it's pretty awesome but this was something we just looked up really quick of how to use maple syrup in lots of different ways and it was a really simple process we just took some of the finished maple syrup heated up to roughly 220 degrees took it out put it in our stand mixer with a uh, whisk head attachment on it whisked it at a high speed for you know a few minutes and it just started to clump up into a granulated sugar which eventually turned into this you can sift it we didn't sift this one too hard so there's a few little bits in there but that's actually fine because I'm using this in baking right now I even use tiny bits in the bread I make now but especially in some other dessert ones I made a cinnamon roll bread 
a few days ago and I used that sugar in it because it's just cool to use maple sugar. You can notice a tiny bit of difference in the uh, sugar taste, you know, it's obviously got a slight mapley flavor to it, but then also this seems to be sweeter than regular like bleached white sugar that you just buy off the shelf in a store. So it's a really neat thing. That's our second way of doing it. And then maple butter. So this is actual like, it's pretty close to just store-bought maple butter. I don't know if everyone's ever had that before. Uh, we only had a mason jar to keep it in and it actually works really well, but it smells amazing. It was also a very simple thing to do. We did almost the exact same thing as the sugar, except we didn't use a whisk attachment. I used a paddle attachment on the uh, stand mixer and just mixed it until it gets thick and creamy. Then you add a bunch of soft butter to it. I don't know all the exact specs, um, but added some butter and some cinnamon and it be just slowly becomes a butter as you uh, mix it together. But it's another cool thing to do with maple syrup that we just had never thought of in the past, but it makes us very excited for all the coming seasons of syrup harvesting or sap harvesting to make syrup and uh, testing out all these different ways and collecting much larger amounts of it than what we did this year. But yeah, so in this bread recipe, I'm using a bit of uh, the maple sugar as well. Good morning, it's April 3rd, Pete's birthday. Happy birthday, Pete. Um, as you can see, with all that rain last night and the heavy winds, we've got some open water behind us now. That's really exciting for us. Every day we're making progress to the point where we can put a boat in the water and have easy access off the island. We'll show you on the main lake, probably a quarter of the area is now open water and the wind keeps uh, bashing away at the ice and the temperatures are hovering above freezing, so, um, it's going to keep doing its thing. Today and tomorrow are kind of chilly days. There, there's no sun and the temperature doesn't get above about 6 degrees Celsius. Uh, but after that, it starts to get into the double digits with hot sun and everything. So it's only going to be a couple more days, I think, uh, of being iced in here at the island. Tonight, they're expecting the rain to switch over to snow. Uh, and it may drop some snow on us, but that's not going to really affect anything this late in the season. So, yeah, stick with us. We're going to keep bringing you reports on, on the big melt-off. Join us next episode as we make an attempt to leave the island by boat. See you down the road.